so my name is Jan, and um, I'm an editor from No Search Press, um, and I edit textbook, um, tech books. Um, so today I'm going to talk about flocking, and one of the things that you may think about when you come into this room is, uh, what is flocking? So flocking is um, individuals coming together as a group and moving together. So you'll see flocking in the form of uh, birds uh, literally flocking together, um, fish schooling, and you may also see flocking in sci-fi movies. So um, usually um, alien invaders will um, come together um, in a giant flock and will start swarming and attacking. Um, and the thing with movies is usually they're not realistic at all, um, and that is the case for flocking. Uh, so in movie flocking, uh, usually there is one central point of command, and that's um, really an issue because um, that's usually what the heroes target in movies when they want to take down the flock, and then they win and everything's happy. Um, so there are problems with that. And what goes wrong with that is uh, usually there's one central point that's um, communicating uh, where individuals should be in the flock. So it's making computations and sending out radio signals. Or there might be some queen, like in the alien species, if they're an insect species, that's telepathically telling um, everyone what to do, all the drones. Um, and when you take down that central command or the queen, then they might just stop moving, the um, individuals might just drop dead, or something more catastrophic could happen. They just explode in Hollywood fashion. <laughs> now, this isn't true to life. Like, birds don't have like little antennae coming out of their um, heads, and fish usually don't um, have a queen that's communicating to them, and both usually don't explode, hopefully. Uh, so a lot of the systems that we think about um, being centralized really aren't centralized. So for instance, you may think our brain um, controls our whole entire body, and that's a centralized system. But in actuality, our brain's not really micromanaging our individual cells. It's really controlling organs and major um, systems. So um, our cells actually have rules and instructions um, that they follow individually, and then when they come together, they work together, um, and that's the DNA. So this is how flocking kind of works, too, in real life. Um, the birds will have um, some rules or instructions that um, they're uh, following, and then when they come together as a group, um, interesting behavior emerges, and you start to see patterns, um, and that's called emergent behavior in biology. So now that I've told you about flocking, um, I'm going to show you uh, how to actually uh, create a flocking simulation that's really simple. It's really, really simple. Um, and we're going to use NetLogo to do this. And NetLogo is a programming language that's sort of based on Logo. And it's agent-based, which means that you have an agent and you tell it uh, what to do. You give it instructions. And these agents are called turtles. So you can see a turtle up here, um, and that's a little triangle on the screen. And we're going to tell um, this turtle what to do. And there are going to be a whole bunch of turtles, and we're going to tell each of them individually um, what they should be doing and give them some rules. And then hopefully we'll uh, make a flock this way. Well, we will, for sure, because. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, we're going to do it with three simple rules, which I'll go over in more detail pretty soon. And how we're going to do this is we're going to change one property of the turtles. Um, and that's it. That's all we're going to do. Um, so we're going to just change the turtles' headings, which is the, facing, the direction that they're facing. So very, very simple. Um, so I'm going to go over some NetLogo code, um, just so you know um, what's going on. So in this code, we're telling the turtles to, um, one turtle, to look at its neighbors, um, because we don't want it to look at everyone around it. Like, we don't want it to um, change its heading for everything. Um, and we're going to tell it to basically draw a radius around itself, and that's vision. Vision is, um, is a variable that holds the units um, of the radius. And then we're going to tell it to look at the other turtles in that radius, because otherwise, if you just tell it to look at all the turtles, it'll look at itself, too, and we don't want that. And then we're going to assign that to the constant neighbors using um, let. So that kind of looks like this. And they have um, a circle around themselves. That's the vision, the, the radius field. And um, the turtle that we're commanding is the red one. And the turtles are the neighbors, are the purple ones. Um, so that's sort of the basics of how this is going to work. And we're going to tell all the turtles in the simulation to do this. So the first rule is to tell the turtles to align together. Um, so we're going to do this by taking all the headings of the neighbors and then averaging them out and then telling the middle turtle to uh, turn so that it's also facing the same direction. 
Um, so this is um, taking all the headings, and then the average is a dotted line, and we're going to tell the turtle, turn. Um, so once we do that, we get all the turtles are traveling together across the screen uh, very slowly. So you'll see that. Yep. So that's cool, right? Um, OK, and next rule is to tell the turtles to um, stick together. We want them to um, have some cohesion. It turns out cohesive is not a word. I, I found out during this presentation when I was making it. Um, so they're going to cohere together, not cohese. Um, <laughs> So we're going to get them to do this by checking, um, do I have any neighbors around me first? And then they're going to um, draw a smaller circle around themselves called minimum cohesion. That's the area that they want other turtles to be in. Um, and my boyfriend called this the lonely zone, uh, because turtles get lonely when no one else is there. Um, so that looks kind of like this. So there are no turtles in the minimum cohesion area. So there, this turtle is really lonely. And it wants to go near all the other turtles around it. So we're going to do this by taking the average point where its neighbors are. Um, so we just take all the average x, value, x coordinates of the neighbors and all the average y values of the neighbors and average those. We calculate an average point. So average x and average y is the average coordinate. And then uh, we do some. We, we need to do some trigonometry. Uh, NetLogo is really useful, though, so it does some trigonometry magic for us. And we calculate a heading for the um, turtle from the point it's at to the average point. And then we tell it to turn. So calculate average point, calculate the heading um, using the fancy function, um, and then tell the turtle to turn. And when we do that, they start grouping together in the center because that's the average point for all the turtles um, in the simulation. So that's cool, right? Um, and the last rule is to tell the turtles to separate. Basically, we want them to have a personal bubble. They don't want to run into each other. Um, so we're going to draw another radius around the circles, um, around the turtles, and tell them that's their personal bubble. If any other turtles are in that personal bubble, any encroachers, then turn away from them um, because we don't want them to be there. So this is sort of what that looks like. There's a neighboring a turtle that's in the personal bubble of that turtle, so it turns away from uh, the turtle that's encroaching in its space. And you do that, this kind of looks similar to alignment, you'll see. But um, the trails are trying to travel in parallel, so they'll um, start making an interesting pattern that's kind of similar, but um, it's important. And when you put all of that together, you get flocking. So the turtles um, come together in groups, and then they um, merge, and they'll separate. Um, and that's what that is. OK, so uh, this is technically the end of my presentation. But I actually have um, some more content, uh, because I talk fast enough. <laughs> so extra examples. So this is the same simulation, but I just manipulated the variables a bit. And in this, there's no cohesion. So they're not really forming groups. They're just sort of um, aligning with each other. And then um, they're trying to stay separated. So they're trying to fly in parallel. And kind of makes a cool screensaver-ish effect. I thought that was fun. Uh, and then in this one, um, there's a lot of cohesion. They all want to be together, but then um, they still want to also align and separate. So you'll see like two turtles at a time kind of wiggling out of the group. And then once they reach a certain point, they separate from each other and they go back into the group. Um, so it's cool. And then um, last example. Um, so here I've added a predator, which is the giant white uh, triangle. And it's trying to eat all the turtles on the screen. And you'll see, um, with flocking, they all sort of group together. And theoretically, um, when this happens, the, um, it should make it so that it's harder for the predator to actually get the turtles, because they're all trying to fly in the same direction. And um, they're theoretically like going to all warn each other, kind of, like uh, not purposely, but warn each other that there's a predator and to like, get away. Uh, it doesn't work so well in this, because we're only changing the headings, though. Um, so that's something to know. And um, so if you're interested in flocking and um, doing something um, yourself, you can download NetLogo. And there are actually flocking programs in there um, that are built in. So pretty cool. You can manipulate variables and stuff. And you can also make your own flocking um, uh, simulations by changing things like speed or the angle in which the um, all the turtles can see, because you can make uh, V-shaped sort of um, figurations if the turtles like consider eyesight and stuff. Um, whether they can see a view, they like start stacking. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you very much.